to you, Laz. Well. What's going on? This is Laz. This is Dave Shivari. And we are from El Nino. And you are watching Rockin' Live right here today in France. We are, same as we do most records, we all got together, everybody kind of wrote on their own for a little bit, kind of got their ideas down. Then we all got together at Last and Christian Studio at Sound Wars, we jammed out and started the writing process, you know, wrote as many uh, songs as we could, uh, 16 tracks or 15 tracks, picked out the best 10, trying to come out with a record that's more quality than quantity and not try to uh, put too many songs that were going to be meaningful on the record, you know. Everybody has their own different ways of, of doing their thing and then when we all get together because ultimately we are, even though we all live in different parts of the U.S. now, New Jersey is still kind of like the El Nino central hub and that's where we all come together to create after everyone puts all their stuff together. Some people don't like coming there, but tough shit is where it's the home of the band. New York, New York is where the band started, you know, East Coast and, you know, it's the place where we're all meet, basically. It's a starting point every time for every tour and everything else we do, you know? Damn amazing. Yeah. It's going amazing. It's better than we thought it was gonna go. You know, we thought it was gonna be good and considering that, you know, the back ten years ago there was a lot more, you know, uh, traffic now than there ever was, you know. In Paris or London or Germany you'd have 10, 12 shows a week. Now there's hundred shows a week. So considering the amount of traffic, we are the tours doing amazing. Yeah, we've been very lucky. It gets harder every year. Every year of your existence, the the, music, the, the genre is changing, the record business is changing. But you know, we always chose our own path, and in the long run, it paid off for us. So you know, we're very lucky to, to still be able to come out and, and play to full houses every night, and you know, to keep our fans and make new fans. It's been good. It's been good to us. I, I, I think that you know. Us staying, sticking to our guns, and like Glass is saying, keeping to our originality of the band. We're not trying to be like anybody else, you know. As long as we stay 100% on Nino, I think we'll always have a career because I think people appreciate originality, you know. And um, I think that we've been very lucky. Our fans are amazing people, and they very loyal to us, and we're loyal to them. So we got some unique members in the band. I mean, this rag was created, and the mold was broken, and it could only be one Dave Shivari. The same as one or rule us to one Christian Machado and, and definitely together, one last peanut because this guy's fucking crazy. I, I think I'm <laughs> I think I'm the one that's actually the most sane in the band. You know, you know but they, my <laughs> bandmates say I'm not. You know the guy that thinks he's the least crazy, he's the most fucking crazy. It's always the, the person that oh I'm not crazy, he's the fucking craziest one. That's this guy right here. Yeah. But I, I'm not nearly <laughs> half as crazy as he is. <laughs> exactly, there you go. And everybody else. But it's okay. Hey, if they see me as crazy, I think that's cute. It's interesting. A bunch of crazy guys think a normal guy is crazy. It's kind of all right. <laughs> She's like, what the fuck do you say? <laughs> <laughs> We just, it's the best of. <laughs> yeah, we just, you know, it's just, hard. It's very hard to, you know, because you don't know what to, what to play. You have, everyone has certain songs that they're dear to them, as well as we have songs that are singles, and fans want to hear both. Yeah. A lot of the real hardcore El Nino fans want to hear songs that we never play because they're not singles. And a lot of the newer, younger kids and fans, they want to hear the singles. Because that's what they know. They go on YouTube. They see how can I live, you know. They see the but stuff for real. And but on this last record, we did something very uniquely different than before any other records. We never, we didn't actually sit down to write a single. We just wrote a record, and if something sounded like the single, then that was what we were gonna go for. So it's a little bit better on this one here because you know this it gives us more options. It's getting a set list for a tour. It's very fucking painful. Yeah. Everybody wants to play their favorite songs. It's the biggest pain in the ass. It starts with one email. Okay, should we do this? This this set list. 
And they answer like 60 fucking emails of the same shit. Because there's like, you know, there's at least 13 <laughs> songs that are just staples. Like, we have to play them. So, it's a long know. list. It's about an hour and 20 minutes, fifth, an hour and 15 every night. We go through our, our, our hits, you know, but, you know, they were top charts in our heads. <laughs> but we just start going shit after hit. But we, we try to give it a little bit from every record. You know, particularly probably the first record gets the most love because that was the root of the band and that's what the fans gravitated to first. So, you know, we have more standards from our first record and then we start breaking it up a little bit from every other record after that. But it's, it's coming along and the straight, the, the set is going by so fast. I think we're doing what, 15, 16 songs? 17 songs every night. 17 songs feels like we're playing, I don't know, five. <laughs> That's what he says now, he's tired every night. Well, no, you know, I'm actually, I'm, I'm still going strong. Today was the show number eight in a row. It's we eight have, shows straight and no day off. We got ten in a row, no days off, and that's all good. I don't mind it, I'd rather play every single day. I like it like that. <laughs> It varies from country to country. To me, what's amazing is tattoos. There's hundreds and hundreds of Elino tattoos for our fans. And that to us, for you to mark your body with our name is... It's the greatest honor yeah. they can give us, you know, a celebration of our band. Yeah. And we've affected them, I touched mean, them with the sword. There's hundreds, hundreds of hundreds. We get them every week on the Facebook, El Nino, the IN logo, and it's just amazing, you know? Amazing but, to see people have that kind of, that kind of respect for the band. You know what it is? I, I feel that our, our fans see themselves like we do, like underdogs. And you know, for every record that we put out, you know, it's really for our fans, you know, to, so that our fans win. So they can say to, you know, to the guy who hated on us, say, I told you so, and they're still around, they're still putting out great records. Where are your bands? I mean, you know? so we, we fight for our fans, you know. I mean, there's one thing too that, you know, we come out of off the bus. You know, we're playing the show. We always talk to fans. We never ever say, oh, we walk by. It's yeah, bullshit. we don't separate ourselves. You know, we never do. We never say, oh, you know, we get to the club and they say, do you want security here? No, they don't fucking come. They don't come. Why should, why should they not be allowed to speak to somebody that they appreciate? That's fucked up, you know? Yeah. I mean, the fans are a great, uh, probably our most important part of our career. Yeah. And we're very grateful for them. Without them, there's, there's no band. Yeah. So. We respect them greatly, <laughs> like one of us. If they identify with us through our music, we identify with them for identifying with us. So we have that in common. So off the bat, you know, there's almost an instant relationship with our fans. And, and you know, we have fans that follow us around like we're in Europe. We'll have fans that'll catch, you know, six, seven shows sometimes. Yeah. All the El Nino, like, you know, fan base will get together, you know, which have become an alliance from different countries and they all get together and travel together, which is a lot of fun too. So right now we have like 11 El Nino fan clubs on Facebook for different countries, you know? It's crazy, it's just, you know, it's pretty amazing. We do contests all the time. You know, the club, we tell the club owners a lot of times, hey, you know, give away five pairs of tickets. Let's do a meet and greet with the band. So if they've set, they've set up any kind of meet and greet, we're always free to do it. We'd we'll love to do it. Yeah, you know, we're very close to the, We haven't been here in a couple of years, but the diehard El Nino fans, we have never lost touch with them. Even though they haven't seen us, we've still communicated with them in some form, whether it's an email or whether it's through the, the fan page or the El Nino page, we always kind of stay communicating with our fans, even though we're not always in their country. This, we have fans in Israel, we've never been to Israel. You know, we have fans in India, we've never been there either. So we're doing a lot of different uh, touring opportunities like Thailand and Korea. And back to Japan, we haven't been in 10 years. We have a lot of stuff set up for this year, as well as Australia at the beginning of next year again. And uh, we just, we're just we're going to explore a lot of different ground. Like we're going to Colombia for the first time, in Peru, South America for the first time in May. And we've never been there before. 
allowed to do it. You know, we love to visit new places and, and, and create new opportunities for ourselves for our fans.